Okay, so in this video, we are going to be taking a look at how to remove a node given a specified key parameter in a circular linked list. So for instance, let's assume that we're given the following linked list as input. So the this linked list, the circular linked list has nodes with data values A, B, C, and D. And then again, this arrow that points to the ellipsis indicates that it goes back to the head node, in this case A, because it's a circular linked list. Let's assume that the key that we want to remove in this case is the node with key B. So the resulting list would be A, C, D, noting that B has been removed from that list. So one thing that we can assume in this case is that the occurrence of nodes is going to be unique. So for instance, there won't be any duplicate nodes with the same data values. Um, and if that was the case, then this remove function, the way we're going to code it up, would only take care of removing the first occurrence of that node. So we're going to assume for the sake of this example that it's only going to remove keys with unique values. So what I have here is a defined a C list object from the circular link list class that we've been working on thus far in this series of videos. And I've gone ahead and appended the data values A, B, C, D to be identical to this example that we just went over here. And then I also have some calls to the remove function that we'll be coding up in this video, namely remove the node with data value A and then remove the node with data value C and then print the resulting list. So in that case, if we did that, we would have the list uh, B and D. So if we wanted to be exactly like this example of only removing the key with B, one thing we can do is we can just replace this A and C with just one call to remove B. Let's just be as close to this example as we can. So what we're going to do in this video is code in the logic for the remove function. So I've gone ahead and created a prototype for that function. It's It takes self since it's part of the class we've been working on thus far and also the key. So the key is a data value that will correspond to the data value we wish to remove from the circular linked list. So really for this function, there's two major cases that we need to account for. One of the cases is the node that we wish to remove is the head of the list. We'll have to be taking, we'll have to take care of that in a specific way. And the other case is if the node that we wish to remove is not the head. So those are the two major cases that we have to deal with. So let's first consider what we do in the case where we want to remove the head node. So what if the head node has the key that we want to remove? So in this case, what if the key is equal to A? So if self.head.data is equal to the key, that's going to be our first case that we'll consider. What we're going to do then is we're going to, essentially, we want to figure out where the um, previous node is to this head here. So we want to go all the way through the list in this case, and then find where is it that we have the current node.next pointing to the head. So in this case, we keep going, we check if the next pointer points to the head, this does not, points to B. Does this next pointer point to the head, it points to C. This one points to D. This next pointer does point to the head of the list. And we want to store this information, we want to find this information, because we essentially want to reorient this pointer not to point to A, because again, we're removing that, but we want to make sure that this pointer points to this guy over here, essentially the next node of the head. So we want to figure out what that previous node is so we can manipulate the pointers in the appropriate orientation. So if this is the head node that we're after, then what we're going to do is we're going to say current is equal to self.head and we're going to essentially move this pointer along in the list until we get current.next equal to the head. So what we're going to do is while current.next is not equal to the head, we're going to move that pointer right along in the list. So we're going to say current is equal to current.next. And then at that point, once we've gone through the while loop, if current is equal to current.next, if that, if, sorry, if current.next is equal to the head, then the current node should be pointing to this node here in this example. So this is the previous node to the head, and that's the one that we want to reorient the pointer for. So in this case, we've got the node that we're after. So we want to say, okay, this one shouldn't point to the head anymore. This one should point to this guy. And the way we refer to this guy over here is we say point to point to self.head.next. So this is self.head, point to self.head.next, which is this guy over here. So current.next is equal to self.head.next. And then also since we've 
pointed this thing to the appropriate location. This is out of the way. It's not there anymore. We're going to update the head of the list because this is now the head of the list. This is now the first node in our circular linked list. So we need to make sure that we update that. And the way that we update that is we set the head of the list equal to self.head.next. And that takes care of that case. So actually, let's just verify that that does what it's supposed to do. Let's go ahead and replace B with A in this case. So again, we have A, B, C, D. We, sorry about that. We have A, B, C, D. We remove A, and then we print the resulting list. So if I go ahead and save this and run it, we see that the resulting list is B, C, D. So we don't have any of the functionality for any of the other nodes. So for instance, if I put in B over there, run it, I'll just get the list A, B, C, D, because we have this if condition, which only at the moment checks if the head node is equal to the key. So now we're going to go back up to here and put in the else condition. So otherwise, if the key is located at a node other than the head node, or if it just doesn't exist at all, this else condition will take care of that. So otherwise, we're going to keep track of the previous and current node as we move along. Because let's, let's say that we do want to remove this node with key B. So we move along, and this is the one that we want to remove. So we want to update the pointer, the previous pointer, and we also want to update uh, the next pointer. So we want to essentially remove this from the list. In order to do that, we need to say A shouldn't point to B anymore because it's not in the list, but A should point to the next one in the list, which is C. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have two pointers, one which will set initially equal to the head, that will keep track of the current node, and then another one which will initially set to none, and this will keep track of the previous node, because again, we want to keep track of where to reorient these pointers. So we have that, and we're going to say while current.next is not equal to the head, so again, very similar to what we had up here in this while condition, we're going to move right along, so we're going to say uh, we're going to update the previous pointer equal to the current. Then we're going to say current is equal to current.next to move the current pointer right along. And then we're going to periodically check as we move along in this list, is the data element of the node that we're currently on equal to the key that we're given in the function. So if the current.data is equal to key, then we'll process it accordingly. Essentially what we'll do, let's say that it's B, what we want to do now that we have both the previous and current information, we want to say the this arrow here, so essentially previous.next, should point not to B where it currently points, but it should point to current.next, which is this guy right there. So we should say previous.next is equal to current.next, and then we want to move right along in the list, so current is equal to current.next. So that should be it for the else condition. Let's verify this works. Let's just make a call to this function here. So again, ABCD, we're removing B from the list and then we're printing the resulting list. So let's write that and run it. So indeed we have ACD, so the B is gone. Let's go ahead and um, let's remove the C from the list. So we'll do that as well. So we should have A and D in this case. So we have A and D. Let's go ahead and remove that last node just to make sure that it actually removes the last node properly as well. So we'll say D. We only have A here, which is good. Now let's try and remove something that's not actually present in the list. So let's say C list .remove E. So E is uh, an element in the list that does not exist. We only have A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D. So let's go ahead and try this statement here. So if we do this, so we've removed B, C, D, we're going to try to remove E and we just get A. So since there's no element with an E, it's the same as uh, the previous three lines up here would have us have us believe. So that pretty much does it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you again for taking the time to watch and have a great day.